Week 13. It's over. <laughs> the game, the, um, the Patriots-Bills game just ended. Let's talk about that first because, my goodness, it was cold. It was snowing before the game started. And what the Patriots did in this game was absolutely hilarious. How? They won with Mac Jones only passing the ball three times. Three. Patriots go into their bye week, which is like, apparently that is the latest bye week we've ever had in the NFL. Gee whiz, thanks NFL. You could have had 18 games, hint, hint. You know, you know start to stretch these buys a little bit. But, um, yeah, the Patriots finally get a bye after 13 games. And they're going to be number one in the AFC, thanks to a lot of things that happened on Sunday. Crazy things that happened on Sunday. And, unfortunately for the Bills, they got, they got to the red zone a couple times. And, unfortunately for the Bills, they just could not capitalize. Like, it was either, you know... It was either the wind was too much of a factor or Dawson Knox. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't understand it. I really don't. So the Patriots went in a slugfest. Sunday night was also a slugfest, but for different reasons. Oh my goodness. How bad does it get for the Broncos? This was really, really rough to watch if you watch this game. Uh, we all knew the NFL shouldn't have flexed this game this Sunday night, but this was really brutal because the Broncos had a, had a plan. Drain the clock. Keep the Chiefs off the field. Yet, they could not capitalize when they got to the red zone. They, Titty Bridgewater got picked off for a pick six by Daniel Swordson of all guys. You know, the Daniel Swordson who has been playing very well the past few weeks. Yeah, that guy. It, craziness, crazy stuff right there. Like I, I just don't understand the Broncos at this time. Like they had it, they they had things right in their grasp. And then the Seahawks somehow they upset the 49ers. I didn't even watch this game. In fact, most of the most of the later games I didn't even really watch till the very end because I I I had some other things to do. But and speaking of things to do, I don't know what the Ravens were thinking. Going for two against the Steelers, in which Mark Andrews, of course, of course he dropped it. It was not a great pass from Lamar Jackson. But why are you going for two in a situation where the Steelers' offense, you know, it was a slugfest. I, 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 I told you. I told you all last week it was either going to be a blowout or a slugfest. And that's exactly what the Ravens-Steelers game was. Absolutely ugly that game was. There was just n nothing about it. Nothing about this game was pretty. And yet the Steelers, now they're 6-5-1. and five and one, So, um, yeah. I, I genuinely don't know how things are going to go. You know, because, I mean, the Ravens faltered. And that benefited the Patriots. It benefited them so much. You know. And then you have the Washington football team. I don't know where this team has come from these past few weeks. I don't know where Taylor Heineke's been coming from these past two couple weeks. He's been playing some good football. This whole team for the Washington football team has been playing some damn good football. And the Raiders, just when they had, just when they had a huge victory, they squander opportunities again. They squander them. They had they had the opportunity to win this game. And they didn't. They did not win this game. It does not make any sense how you don't win this. Like, you had all the momentum of the world after beating the Cowboys. It, it, yet again, squandered. Completely squandered. And then you had... A, well, let's, let's just talk about these two games really quick here. Uh, the Jags, they lost to the Rams. That was pretty obvious. Then the Cardinals, they... They beat up on the Bears. Congrats to Kyler Murray for coming back and everything like that. Also, let's just get the Bucks Falcons out the way real quick too. You know, Bucks took care of the Falcons pretty easily, despite the fact that Tom Brady got pick sixth. But I mean, it is what it is. Colts also, you know, whooped on the Texans. God, the Texans are bad. 
and then the Dolphins get into the win column, once again beating the Giants in a game that was pretty ugly. You know, Xavier Howard always, always playing tough, and then, and then you know, Daniel Jones he didn't even get to play. Mike Glennon got to play, you know, and he did not do great. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the, I'll just go over those real. I'll just go over those real quick. But these uh, some of these other games here, oh dear lord. The Chargers and the Bengals. What we all thought should have been flexed into Sunday night, probably. A lot of people thought this game should have been flexed into Sunday night. And I don't know where the Chargers came from. That first quarter and a half, they were whipping the Bengals. Whipping them. I mean, of course they had a missed extra point in there. But, I mean, they were whipping the Bengals like Joe, like, Justin Herbert was throwing it all over the place to Guyton and, and, and Mike Williams and, and uh, Keenan Allen. I mean, all those guys are catching balls and stuff like that. They were just doing everything on this Bengals defense. And then, I don't know what in the world happened. Like, the Bengals somehow decided to say, hey, we, we can play ball, too. We can play ball. And, you know, Burrow, Nixon, and, and Jamar Chase and company. Well, actually, T. Higgins, excuse me, not... Not Jamar. T. Higgins had that touchdown. He was torching this Chargers defense. Like, and then, and then the crazy things happened in the second half in which the Chargers were able to get over the hump and win this game by 19. You know, like a, like what a crazy fumble, you know, in the second half. I, I did watch most of the second half of this game. In all honesty, because I, I, mean, I thought the game was over at that point. And it, it actually, I actually have to turn to more intriguing things that happened on Sunday, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, yeah, the Chargers, they needed that victory. They needed a victory like that really, really badly. You know, sucks for the Bengals, you know. I mean, the Chargers needed this one. They needed this one. Um, the Eagles and the Jets, I, I tuned into this game for quite a bit, and I was just sitting here completely perplexed. Or rather, perplexed, not perplexed, perplexed because Jalen Hurts wasn't playing. It was Gardner Minshew playing. You know, Zach Wilson came back and everything like that, you know, too. But I mean, I think he had been cleared for quite a while. I'm, I don't remember because it's the Jets, remember. I don't really care about watching the Jets play football. Um, so. I'm just sitting here surprised, more surprised that Gartner Minshew was out here tearing it up, you know. And I'm surprised he's even on the Eagles. I'm just, I'm just sitting here completely surprised. Like what? Gartner Minshew is on the Eagles since when? I have no idea what Jalen Hurts' injury or his sickness was. If he was injured or if he was sick, I have no idea. Com completely flabbergasted. Like the Eagles, they. A victory like that is what you need after, you know, squandering, you know, your opportunities last week. And they got the victory they needed. They kept, the Jets kept it close, though. They kept it real close. But, of course, you know, the Jets, the Jets, they do Jet things by turning the ball over or, you know, allowing big plays. You know, so it is what it is there. And then the Cowboys, I'll touch on this Thursday night football game for a minute. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Man, let me tell you. Let me tell you, all the boys were coming back in town for this one. They, 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 all, they head out of Big Easy with a huge victory. Taysom Hill played absolutely terrible. The Dallas defense picked them off four times. One of them went for a pick six. You know, Taysom Hill was running the ball on us, though. He was running the ball on the Cowboys. I don't know why he was running the ball on the Cowboys. I don't know why the Cowboys could stop him, but he was running the ball on the Cowboys. It, it, it was what it was, you know, because, I mean, I'm just sitting here like, wow, you know, I'm just like, Saints are, Saints are on a free fall, honestly, in all honesty, you know, they're on a free fall towards, you know, not being that great of a team, you know, anymore, a team that we should probably start thinking about, you know, because they're, I believe it's, yeah, yeah it's week 16, we should start thinking about flexing them out of that, you know, spot, but they're not, they're not going to flex that game, thanks to, you know, thing, thanks to, you know, other games and stuff like that, but it's probably, it might be too late to flex that game, I don't know, I don't think it's too late to flex the, um, the, uh, that Sunday night game in week 16, where they have to take off the Buccaneers, I don't know yet, the Saints are just, they, they, they just have problems that they just can't, 
that that the, that the season's not gonna fix. You know, injury bug is gonna just continue to hurt them. You know, yeah, they're gonna have to get a win sometime soon. You know, to stay in this thing. But for now, you know, this loss kind of stings. It kind of stings. It really does. And then last, but certainly not least, the thumbnail for this week. The most comical thing that could happen. The Lions finally, finally got their first win. Like, I just don't understand it. I don't understand. The Vikings have been playing some good football. But this defense, you know, two minutes left to go. You think you have this in the bag, you know. Lions were down, what, 27-23? You had this in the bag. And then Jared Goff puts a money-type drive down the field. You know, we're talking a drive that I didn't think I didn't think it was going to get. I didn't think they were going to get there. I thought the Lions were going to, you know, do Lions things that the Lions have been doing all season long. And yet, here we go. Goff throws a dart into the end zone. I forgot who caught it. And they flip the script. They win the game, and the Vikings are now five and seven. This team should not be five and seven. In all honesty, like again, Kirk Cousins has been playing lights out this year. I just don't understand it. I really don't. Like this, help me, help me, Vikings fans, help me. I I do not understand this. Like I watched. A, Good, like a good, like those last three or four minutes of this game, and I'm just sitting there like, like, the, like this team, this Vikings team shouldn't be losing games. What's wrong with this defense? What is wrong with this defense, Mike Zimmer? Get it together. I need to get it together real quick. Otherwise, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You gonna be sitting on the couch watching the playoffs happen. So. Now that we got a good idea of things, of course, you know, the AFC East, you know, now the Patriots have a two-game lead, but the Dolphins are actually gaining on in things. You know, the Dolphins are playing like the team we expected them to play like. You know, obviously against, you know, some games have been against inferior competition, you know, but the Dolphins are playing like the team that we expect them to play, and they're catching up on the Bills. They're catching up on them. Chiefs, they've taken command of the AFC West. Chargers is still right there with them. You know, there's going to be a big matchup, I think, in a couple weeks' time, you know, in which the Chiefs and the Chargers are going to play, and that's going to be really, really fun. Raiders, they continue to squander. Broncos are squandering things as well. You know, again, they had it. <clears throat> they had things, and they, and they just couldn't get it done. AFC North still a log jam. You know, the Browns were off this week. Um, uh, so the Bengals losing did not help. The Steelers winning helps them. But the Raiders, it, it, I mean, not the Raiders, the Ravens. The Ravens lo losing this game causes a big schism in the AFC North. <clears throat> and then the AFC South, like the Colts are gaining on the Titans. Like, I know the Titans, you know, are injury-prone and injury-riddled and battered and beaten and stuff like that, but they're gonna, the Titans are going to have to win some games real soon. They're going to have to win some real soon if they want to keep this AFC South, you know, keep it like they expected it to be, like the preseason predictions expected it to be, you know. In the NFC, because the Cowboys, you know, lost some games, you know, like they lost three or four, if, they, they, they lost three or four games in, in the past couple of weeks. You know, now Washington and the Eagles are gaining on the Cowboys. And this is what, uh, I think this is what people were worried about. You know, the Cowboys, you know, not, you know, it's not it's not entirely their fault. COVID was a big factor. That's why Mike McCarthy's not here. Or right, he wasn't in, in New Orleans. That's why Amari Cooper was out. You know, I mean, COVID was COVID was and is still a big factor in things, and it just is what it is. So the Cowboys are going to have to keep their division lead intact. You know, Washington, you know, what, next week? You know, the, 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 the Cowboys are going to have these big divisional games you know, over the next few weeks, so they're going to have to get it together. You know, if defense, if the defense can play like that, you know, then this should be no problem. They should lock up the NFC East. 
the West still, yeah, the Cardinals are still number one seed. They're still the number one seed. They they should be the number one seed. You know, again, that Packers loss, you know, that they had on a Thursday night a couple weeks back, I really didn't think they should have lost that. I really think they should have won that game. Again, that, that was a thriller a couple weeks ago. That really should have been won by the Cardinals. And, yeah, but, I mean, the, the Rams, they finally stopped the skid because, remember, they lost three straight. They finally stopped the skid. The 49ers, if they hadn't lost to the Seahawks, I really would have thought, you know, again, I would have thought, you know, the NFC West would have became a three-team race again. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, the Packers, they're still, they're going to win the North. Yeah. I mean, they're probably going to win the North either this week or next week. Uh, or, 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 yeah, well, this coming week or the week after. Um, I, I just think that, like, the Vikings are too inconsistent. We know the Bears aren't good. We know the Lions, you know, despite the fact that they won their first game, they still have 10 losses. Um, and the NFC South, it looks like the Buccaneers are also going to lock it up very soon. Probably either next week, too, or the week after. You know, I'm just thinking that solely based on what I'm thinking, you know, at this time. Because, I mean, the Panthers, Falcons, and Saints are all 5-7. and seven, So, you know, I, I'm thinking the North and the South and the NFC are going to be locked up real soon. So, it's just the West and the East that's going to be a dogfight. You know, Cardinals and the Rams face each other next week, and we got, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, man, like, this week 14 slate looks, oof, ooh, it's looking real good, because, I mean, there's a lot of interesting games for week 14, but we'll talk about those games on Thursday, so, I'll see you all then, we got some college football coming to the channel, you know, some college football stuff, you know, got to talk about it, of course, you know, we got a big week in college football as well, with the FCS, Army, Navy, Heisman, you know, I mean, coaching changes and everything like that in between. Of course, check out the um, the arena slash indoor football update from earlier today. Had some good updates when it comes to tier three like leagues. I know there isn't really a tier one anymore, but I guess you can call the IFL tier one, and then tier two is like the NAL and CIF. But you know, that's just me. Um, so check out those videos. Um, Check out some other videos on the channel as well. Of course, please don't watch the Steven Crowder one. Um, a lot of people are either watching the um, Arena Football Rumors video or you know, the Arena Football League Returning Rumors video or, you know, something else like um, like the whole NGL thing, you know, that's also been getting a lot of views recently. So, y'all keep on subscribing, keep on trucking, keep on coming to the channel. I really appreciate it, each and every one of you as we continue to keep growing towards, what, 200 subscribers? I mean, we got 152. It was 154, but I don't know who unsubscribed in the past few days. Forget those guys who unsubscribed. Come on back, and, you know, I, I did say forget those guys, but come on back, come on back, and let's have a chat. Comment section down below. Yeah, let's have a chat about your NFL team. You know, what y'all are thinking about what happened to your NFL team this week. So, I don't know. I, I, again, like, this week was crazy, as usual. Yeah, NFL, NFL every week is crazy, man. And I'll see you all once again tomorrow. You know, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. You know, do all that good stuff, yada, yada, yada. Again, see you tomorrow.